The touch sensor is one of the simplest yet most powerful sensors that you can add to an FTC robot. A lot of teams create unreliable autonomous routines because they're just guessing with timers, when the simple sensor could make your robot react far more reliably. Getting this right is the difference between an autonomous that sometimes works and one that scores consistently, giving your team a serious competitive edge. In this video, I'm going to run you through the entire process. We'll start with the correct way to wire the sensor into your rev control hub. Then I'll show you how to properly configure it using your driver station. And finally, we'll jump into Android Studio and I'll walk you through the exact Java code that you need to program the sensor and make your robot respond to its environment. I'll also show you my preferred way of program that's more in line with some software development industry standards as well. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been a robotics educator for over 10 years. I've coached multiple national championship FTC teams and Inspire Award winners. I know that mastering these fundamental components is what builds a winning robot. This is assuming that you have already have your programming test board set up and it's already connected to your driver station. If you haven't, if you've been following up to this point and you followed my tutorial on using this and wiring it up, you can go ahead and skip this part and move around to the programming section. Otherwise, let's talk about this quick configuration file. Well, actually, first, let's talk about wiring up. So this is our touch sensor here. And effectively, whenever you press it, it will light up a little green light to let you know that something has actually tapped our touch sensor. Our touch. Wiring this goes out of this JST connector and into a digital port. And I've decided to wire mine. And for me, before going to my digital port, I've decided to wire mine into the digital 2-3 port. So let's take a closer look at the driver hub and make our configuration file quick. So if I click on these little three dots, I can click configure robot. And this is us telling the control hub what's actually connected. So I'm going to go to my test bench profile here. So I've already had created one inside my test bench. You can either make a new one or edit a current profile. Select our control hub portal. Select our control hub. And I'm going to scroll down to digital devices. Now, because I plugged into port 2.3, nothing actually gets read on digital port 2. Instead, touch sensors only read on odd ports. In this case, it's going to be on port 3. We can tap this selected device. You could set this up as a ref dud sensor. I prefer to set up as a digital device, mostly as a teaching tool, because it's more, it's closer to what you'll actually use in industry. And then for our naming our sensor, it's going to be touch underscore sensor. I like to use snake cast as a way of knowing that these things are sensors. I'll go ahead and choose done, 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 save. You can give it a name. I'm going to call it test bench. Select OK. And then you need to click activate on this. So once you click activate, it's going to disconnect your robot controller. It's going to restart your robot and it should pick it back up again. And there you go. You now have a configuration file set up. Let's head on over and actually start programming this. So over on Android Studio inside the team code section, up to this point, we only have a single package. And we're actually going to add a second package inside of this. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this. I'm going to make a new package right here. And for this new package, we're going to call it all the way up to dot mechanisms. And inside our mechanism package is where we're going to store any sort of like any sort of net attached to our robot. So now we can have classes both in the team code section and inside of our mechanism section. So let's go ahead and make a new class inside of the mechanisms folder. So I'm going to right click on this and say new Java class. And we're going to call this one the test bench class. If you already have mechanisms set up for your robot, feel free to go ahead and add this to whatever your mechanisms class is inside your mechanisms folder. If you don't have a mechanisms package set up, I highly suggest you do so as it's a great way of organizing your code. So if you don't have a mechanisms class set up, go ahead and follow this. So inside of our public class, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new a private digital channel. And our digital channel is going to be our top sensor. So this tells us we have a new class member or variable of the digital channel class called touch sensor. And digital channel comes directly from that uh, FTC SDK. And then rather than setting this as a public digital channel, we set it as a private digital channel so that only our test bench can interact with this. And you should do that for all of your hardware. It's just a good practice to keep them isolated from your class or to keep them isolated from your main op modes classes. Now, normally, instead of calling this touch sense, you might give this something like a more descriptive name. Like you might, oops, uh, you may give it a name like touch sensor on 
claw or touch sensor uh, and then uh, intake. So you should give it a descriptive name, but because we're just using this on a programming board, uh, I'm just giving it a, a default name of touch sensor. So next we're going to go ahead and make an initialization statement uh, for our public class. So I'm going to make a public void in it, and then we need to give this a hardware map. I'm going to give it a hardware map as an argument. Now we could technically call this initialize method anything we want, but because we're already using initialize method in a lot of our op modes, it makes sense to continue on that pattern of initialization. You might be tempted to make this your constructor, uh, but we don't actually want to make this our constructor because it limits some things that we can do in the future. So hardware map also comes from the FTC SDK, and it's how our robot knows and grabs what specific pieces of hardware are attached to our control hub. So here's where we're actually going to assign a value to that touch sensor variable that, or that touch sensor member that we made earlier. So we're going to grab touch sensor is going to be equal to, so here we're going to grab that hardware map dot get, and we're going to grab a digital channel dot class, and then we're going to put in strings here, touch underscore sensor with a semicolon at the end. So this assigns our variable touch sensor with our digital channel class with the name of touch sensor. This name here has to match exactly what is inside your configuration file. And that was what we called touch underscore sensor inside of our digital channels. Now, because we set this up as a digital device, we also need to set its direction. So digital devices can be either inputs or outputs. If we look at our control hub here, I've got a LED down here that is an output, so we can send values to this LED. This touch sensor is an input because we are inputting values into our Rev Control Hub. So in order to set its mode as an input, we are going to grab touch sensor dot set mode, and we are going to grab digital, oops, that's dialog, digital channel dot mode dot, and let's grab input. So this is going to tell the control hub that the digital device that is connected is an input. Now, the next thing we need to do, or the last thing we need to do for this touch center to work is we need to use our getter function. If you remember from previous tutorials, you can have getter and setter functions inside of classes whenever you have uh, class members to be able to get values from them for other classes. Uh, and for our touch sensor, because it's an input, we're actually not going to make a setter function here because we don't want to set the value of touch sensor because we want to read what the current state is. So instead, we're going to create a getter method to be able to get the current state with the current value that that touch sensor is reading. So a touch sensor returns a, or sorry, not a touch sensor, a digital channel returns a Boolean as either true or false. So we're going to go ahead and make a new public Boolean, and we're going to call this method the get touch sensor state. We're going to give it no arguments, and we're going to open up with the curly brackets. And this method is really simple. All we're going to do is simply return touch sensor dot get state. And what that's going to do is it's simply going to give us the value of what the current reading of the touch sensor is. Now, digital inputs for the control hub are pull up sensors. Uh, and what that means is that this in its current state will constantly be reading true, 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 true. When you press it, it should read false. And the reason it does that is because pull up buttons or pull up resistors tend to be a little bit more reliable than pull down. Uh, there's some electrical uh, reasons for that, but just know that pull up resistors are typically more reliable on buttons than pull down resistors are. So with the new mechanism states or mechanisms class done, let's go ahead and actually write an op mode so we can actually read this touch sensor. So I'm going to come back to outside of the mechanisms folder, my main team code, and I'm going to make a new class. We're going to call this one touch sensor practice. And our touch sensor practice is going to extend, oops, not override, our op mode. As always, we need two methods. We need a public void init, and we need a public void loop. Again, I'm using autocomplete on the Android Studio here because it makes it a lot easier to automatically put these things in. I do not like to type these things manually because one, I'm lazy, and two, I make a lot of spelling mistakes. So having these things pop it in for me with autocomplete and Android Studio is super helpful. So let's first make a new class member of the type test bench with the name of bench. So let's make a new test bench, and then it's going to have the name 
then is going to be equal to a new instance of test bench. So now we need to actually assign a value to this. We've created a new instance, but that doesn't actually exist at the moment, or we haven't actually initialized it. So we're going to grab our bench member, and then we'll call the init method with the hardware map. This hardware map, again, comes from SDK. It just grabs the hardware map that's currently attached to the control hub. And this is what's going to run that init statement inside of our test bench here. So that's where we're actually going to create our touch sensor and then set it as an input. So now inside of our loop, the only thing we need to do is telemetry.addData, and we can grab in, oops, let's pull in touch sensor state. And we are going to use that getter method that we made earlier. So I'm going to grab bench dot get touch sensor state. And we'll finish that off with a semicolon. So if we look at our whole code here, we have created a new member of the type test bench called, oops, with a variable name of bench. Inside of our initial license statement, we ran the class method of init for our bench. And we gave the argument hardware map, which is the current map that's pulled from our SDK. And inside of our loop, we are simply adding to telemetry touch sensor state as a string and then getting the current state of that touch sensor. So let's go ahead and build this. I'm going to make sure that I have the Rev Control Hub plugged in. So make sure your Rev Control Hub is plugged in with USB C to A cable. Otherwise, it won't show up on your Android IDE. So I make sure that I select the Rev Control Hub up top. So I made a snafu. There's no teleop that exists here. So because I forgot one critical piece at the start of all of our op modes, if you want to actually show up, we have to make sure we show at teleop or at autonomous. So let's go ahead and build that one more time. Okay, so let's grab our teleop. Come on, grab the touch sensor practice. We're on our initialization statement that gets our hardware map set up. And we'll go ahead and play. And right now our touch sensor state is true. Remember I told you about that pull up resistor that is inside of it. So it's constantly reading a 3.3 volts. So let's go ahead and take a look at with the control hub here. When I go ahead and press this touch sensor, you'll notice that the driver hub changes to false as I press this. And as I let go, it's true. As I press in, it's false. Let's go ahead and look at the driver hub. If I push, it's false. Let go, it's true. So let's change that because one of the nice benefits about having your hardware map set up in its own separate package and its own separate class is allows you to isolate out some of this funniness that happens. So on our test bench Java, what we can do is rather than returning the get state, we can return not get state. If you remember from previous, we can use these not variables and that's just going to return the opposite of whatever its current state is. So if we go ahead and build this now, the touch sensor should work more intuitively as you'd expect which would be, while it makes sense electronically for it to be a pull-up resistor or a pull-up button, it doesn't make sense intuitively programming to have that. So we're actually going to set this with a not return state. So let's go ahead and grab our new method here. We'll go ahead and init, run it, and now it currently state is false. If I press it, it's now going to say true. So if I go and look up the driver hub, I'm not pressing it. Touch sensor says false. When I press it, it is true. Uh, now, if you would like to, you are welcome to go ahead and change this, the name of your uh, getter function to instead of get tantra sensor state, you could say is, oops, you could say is touch sensor pressed. And then with Android Studio, you can actually rename the uses so that in our touch sensor here, it automatically changes any uses of the previous method to whatever we just changed it to. So we don't have to worry about going and finding where it's located in all of our classes because it's all in the same package. So that is awesome reuse of Android Studio. So now we're going to get in some practical exercises. At this point, I'd suggest that you don't ignore these practical exercises. This is probably the most important part of this lesson. So now that you know how to use a touch sensor, it's really important you get practice using it on your own. So the first thing I want you to do is create a new getter method in your test bench class called uh, is touch sensor released and this will return true if the touch 
sensor is not being pressed. So I'll give you a little bit of time to try that one out. So I'm going to do that one pretty easy. We'll come over to a test bench. We'll again, just copy the, uh, from what we did above, we'll make a new public Boolean is touch sensor released and our curly brackets. And we're simply going to return touch sensor dot get state. Now at this point, you could have used an if statement to say, if touch sensor dot get state is true, then you could return false that it's not released, but it's so much easier just to do this all in one line. So the second time is in your op mode telemetry, or the second exercise I like to do, in your telemetry op mode, have telemetry state pressed instead of true or false. Oops, sorry, pressed and uh, not pressed respectively instead of just showing true or false. So there's lots of ways of doing this one. Let's see what you come up with. While there's a lot of ways to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new string object called touch sensor state, and it's going to be assigned to the value of uh, not pressed initially. Then if our bench dot is touch sensor pressed, curly bracket, we're going to reset that touch sensor state to be equal to pressed. Semicolon to finish that off. And then in our telemetry add data, we're simply going to add in our string, which is going to be touch sensor state. So there's lots of ways of doing it. Not necessarily the way you did it may have been wrong, but this is just one way of solving it. So I hope you found that a really helpful tutorial in using touch sensors in your Rev Control Hub and FTC for Java programming. Uh, if you want to get a little bit of further reading, I have a full list of tutorials down below you can take a look at for more FTC Java tutorials. If you want to do more of a book-based tutorial, a good chunk of this code comes from Alan Smith's excellent book on Learn Java for FTC. That is definitely worth a read for a little bit of extra further reading. So if you have any questions or comments or things didn't work the way you'd expect, or you need help with doing something else, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to try to help you out with that. Otherwise, best of luck this season, best of luck with Program Your Robot, and good luck out there.